<clears throat> All right, bug friends, it is 10 a.m. And what you are looking at right now is a giant stag beetle, and we are going to talk about him for sure. So I am going to give it a couple more minutes so we can let some more friends join us. So in the meantime, you can enjoy our friend, the stag beetle. All right, it is 10.02, we are going to get started. Let me just get my camera around here. I'm gonna set it up here so that you can see me for a minute. So good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, or good evening, depending on when you are watching this. So right now we are live, so if you have any questions at all during this time, you can comment them below. And I've got my computer over here so that I can see the comments. So my name is Jenny and I run the insect zoo at Iowa State University and I'm also an entomologist. So if you've been watching the lives, you already know what an entomologist is, but I am going to tell you again and just so if we have any new viewers that they also can learn what an entomologist is. So an entomologist is a scientist. So I am a scientist and entomologists study bugs. But as an entomologist, we don't only study bugs. We get to study the largest group of animals on earth called arthropods. Now arthropods are animals, just like we are animals or dogs or cats, or dolphins, or horses. There's so many animals all over the planet. And some of those animals are arthropods. So to be an arthropod, you must have an exoskeleton. Does anybody know what an exoskeleton is? Does anybody know? If you've watched the lives, you know what an exoskeleton is. It is a skeleton on the outside of the body. Now, do you have an exoskeleton? No, we have bones inside of our body. So we are different than arthropods. So an exoskeleton is a skeleton on the outside of the body, but do they have skeletons inside their body? No, so arthropods, no bones inside, it's just mushy and gushy inside there but they have that exoskeleton to help keep that mush and gush inside. So examples of arthropods are insects, spiders, tarantulas, millipedes, centipedes, scorpions, shrimp, crabs, and lobsters. There are so many arthropods on our planet. In fact, there are more arthropods on our planet than any other animal combined. That is so many. And that is one reason I love being an entomologist because I could study a new arthropod every day and never study the same one twice in my whole entire life. That is so much new cool stuff. So today we are going to talk about beetles. Beetles are an insect. 
Insects have six legs and three body parts, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. And beetles are a group of insects. Did you know that there are over 350,000 species or kinds of beetles on our planet? That's insane. That's so many. So to put that into perspective, let's compare that to plants. So plants are really cool. I love plants, but there are only 250,000 species of plants, all plants. So there's already more species of beetles than there are plants. Now, I have to say that scientists are discovering new plants and new beetles and new insects every day. So uh, that number changes all the time. Now also, what about mammals? So we are mammals, um, dolphins, cats, dogs, those are all mammals. There's only 4,000 species of mammals. What? 350,000 species of beetles, only 4,000 species of mammals. So today we are gonna look at some of my favorite beetle friends. Now most of these are going to be alive, but some of them are not alive. I'm still gonna show you the ones even though they're not alive because they're super, super awesome, okay? So, um, should we get started? Yeah, let's get started. Okay, I'm gonna turn this around. Okay, then I'm gonna set this, oops, hello, my finger. I'm gonna set this up like this. And there's my red piece of paper. We're gonna put the bugs on here. Okay, so first what we're gonna talk about is this guy. Does anybody know what this is called? This is a mealworm but it's also called a larva. So you might be thinking, hey, wait a minute, we were talking about beetles. Well, beetles go through a complete metamorphosis, just like butterflies. So butterflies start off as an egg, and then they hatch out of that egg as a caterpillar, which is also called a larva. Hey, good morning, Tad. I see your comment there. So the larva is, is, so when a caterpillar hatches out of an egg, it is actually a larva, but we can call it a caterpillar, that's just fine. And so this larva hatched out of an egg, but it does not turn into a butterfly. This is gonna turn into a beetle. So we can't call it a caterpillar. This is a super worm. Now they are not superheroes, they do not fight, crime they are just super big and that's why we use them here at the insect zoo because they're really big and easy to see now i'm going to pick this guy up for a minute and we're going to look at him up close so if you see this guy is he an insect his name is mealworm worms are not insects well the easiest way to find out if an animal is an insect is to count the legs and i'm being very gentle with him so I'm not gonna hurt him at all. But if you see those legs, how many legs do you count? One, two, three, four, five, six. So he is an insect. So if we also, look, look at that head. You see his head up there? And these little spiky things coming off the top there. Does anybody know what those are called? Antennae. Now what color is his head? It's dark, right? It's black or brown. What color is the end of his body back here? Is it a similar color to his head? It is. So they are a similar color. Now this guy, he has two behaviors. So I'm gonna show you his behaviors and we kind of saw one of them already. Now, if I go like this, what direction does he walk? He walks backwards. Right, right off the screen. He's just gonna walk right off the screen. Now, 
Uh, can you guys walk backwards? Yes, of course you can. But did you know that most insects cannot walk backwards? They just can't do it. So that means it is a special adaptation that mealworms are able to walk backwards. Now here, I have another trick for you. Watch this, or behavior, watch. If I try to pick him up by his head, it might be a little too slippery on here. Let me get a paper towel so he has something to, hey, where are you going? He's like, I'm gonna go for a walk over here. So if I pick him up, try to pick him up by his head, do you see what he does? Let me see. This guy's like, I'm not having it. Let me get another paper in here. Ooh, this one's a little more feisty. Did he walk off? Yes, he did. Let's see what this one does. Whoa, did you see that? You see how when I try to pick him up by his head, what does he do? He flips. He flips very fast, just like a ninja, right? Now, I have a question for you, my friends. Why would this insect have a head that is the same color as the end of the abdomen and how come he can walk backwards when most insects cannot? Do you think you have an answer? I have an answer. So this animal is actually pretending to have two heads and that helps to fake out the predators or the animals that want to eat him. So they don't know which end is the head. Now, what if that predator was to pick this mealworm up by his real head? What is he gonna do? He's gonna flip around just like he does whenever I try to pick him up by his head. And that helps him to try and escape from those predators and not being eaten for dinner. So walking backwards, makes it look like he has another head back here, which confuses the predator. And then if he gets picked up by his real head, he's gonna flip around really fast. And how does he do that? Because he has strong muscles. He has very strong muscles in his abdomen, in his body, and he uses those to flip around really fast like a ninja if something picks him up by his head. Now, uh... So this is an egg, a larva, a pupa, or an adult. Which one do you think it is? It's a larva, that's right. And just like a butterfly will make a chrysalis around its body when it wants to change, this guy, he makes a pupa. Now the pupa is also what a caterpillar turns into, but then they make that fancy chrysalis, which I call a bug sleeping bag, because it's just like a bug sleeping bag that the animal makes from something in their own body or from something in the environment. And they just wrap that around their body and it helps to keep them warm and dry and protect them. While they're not actually sleeping inside, they are changing. So a caterpillar, turns into a pupa and wraps itself in a chrysalis. This guy, he does not use a chrysalis. He just turns into a pupa. And now I looked to see if we had any pupae today and we do not. So I can't show you that one today, but I do have the adult. Do you wanna see the adult? Awesome, because I want to show you the adult. He's a little dusty. So check out this beetle. This is called a darkling beetle. Why do you think we call it a darkling beetle? Well, because it's dark, my friends, and these guys like dark places. So this is the adult beetle of the superworms. Now, darkling beetles, there are over 20,000 species of darkling beetles in our world. Now that is a lot. Remember, there's about 350,000 species of beetles, and just of darkling beetles, there are about 20,000 species of those. If you are in the United States, there are about 150 species, um, or sorry, there's about 
1,300 species right here in the United States of darkling beetles. So that is a lot. Now, darkling beetles are super awesome for many reasons, but one of my very favorite superpowers that these darkling beetles have is they don't need water. You heard that right. They do not need water. This mealworm and this darkling beetle, they can live their entire life without water. Now that's because they make their own water inside of their body. Now it's not magic, it's just science and biology. So these animals right here, they do not use water. That is so cool. Now, some people like to eat mealworms, including yours truly, this bug lady right here. I love to eat mealworms. They are so good for you. They're full of protein and vitamins, amino acids, calcium. All of the things that your body needs to grow can be found in insects. And so I love mealworms. In fact, they taste just like sunflower seeds when you roast them. So since this animal does not need water, and it's also really good for you to eat, that means it is a sustainable food source. That means that it doesn't use a lot of resources to grow. So I know, okay, I love to eat things like steak and hamburger. I love, love that. In fact, I just made a pot roast at home and my kids love it also. So that stuff is really good. But if we're thinking about feeding a whole bunch of people on our planet and not using up all of our resources to do it, insects are the way to go. To make a pound of beef, it takes about 2,000 gallons of water. That is a lot of water just to get one pound of beef. Now, one pound of beef can make about five hamburgers. So that's not a lot. But these guys, zero gallons of water for their whole life. That is so cool. So right now, again, you're looking at a super worm, a larva, and then the adult beetle. So I'm gonna put this larva down and we're gonna look up close at the beetle. So first I want you to show me, or not show me, you can't really show me. I want you to look at, where's his head at? Do you see his head? His head is right up here. Look at that cute little head. And what can we see on his head? Let's look at it up close. What can we see on his head? Do you see these little things right here? What are those called? Antennae. And you notice how they look like a bunch of little balls? We call those beaded antennae. Insects can have all different kinds of antennae on their heads. What else can you see on the beetle's head? He has eyes. He has two eyes. And they're kind of hard to see because they're black like the rest of his body. But here's one eye right there. And then there's his other eye right there. And these are called compound eyes. Now compound eyes are a bunch of little tiny eyes all put together and they come together to see images or pictures. Now insects can also have a different kind of eye called a simple eye. Now those simple eyes can only see light and dark. So insects can have two different kinds of eyes. They can also have both kind of eyes. That's right. They can have only compound eyes, only simple eyes, or they can have both compound and simple eyes at the same time. Now there is one more thing on his head and that is this right here. Do you see that? That's his little mouth. His little mouth is right there. So on an insect's head, we find antennae, eyes, and a mouth. Now, if I turn him over so you can see his underside, do you see this little space here between my thumbs? 
Now that is his thorax. The thorax is the second part of the body. And on the thorax are the legs. So how many legs do insects have? They have six. Whoops, hello, guy. Okay. So all six legs are found on the thorax. And if the insect has wings, those are also attached at the thorax. So the thorax is where anything that is used for locomotion or movement is found. So now what about this other part back here? You see this part back here behind the thorax? That is his abdomen. Now, let me see if I can get this guy to do a little trick. He's not gonna do it, so let me find another friend real quick. Oh, this guy did it right away. Where'd my friend go? Did you see where he went? I found him. Okay, so if I touch him, do you see these little things sticking out back here? If you were here with me right now, I would ask you to smell this beetle. Mm, I'm gonna smell him. Oh man, so this guy smells stinky. Why would this animal want to stink? What do you think? Now these right here, that's not poop. It's act, they're actually scent glands. They're little squishy glands that let out an odor to make them smell bad so that animals will not eat him. Do you like to eat things that smell bad? No, I don't either, unless it's some stinky cheese. But look at those things just sticking out there. Isn't that super cool? Now, when these guys first come out as adults, these are actually clear. But then the more they let out that odor, the darker in color they get. Isn't that so cool? Okay, so on our beetle, we looked at the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. Now, I know what you're thinking right now. Oh, my gosh, is he dead? No, he's not dead. He's just playing dead, see? <laughs> so we saw the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. And on the head, we found two antennae. Does anybody know what antennae are used for? Does anybody know that? They are used for smelling and feeling around and even hearing by vibrations. Now we also found a mouth right here and he had two compound eyes. All right, I'm gonna put this beetle away and I've got some more darkling beetles that we are going to look at and I'm just gonna pile them all right here onto this paper See if I can build a little boundary so they don't go too far. They're like, nope, we're just gonna walk right over that. <laughs> Here, let's try this. You guys won't be able to walk over this. Here we go. <laughs> this is great. There's still, there's a little crack there. They're like, we're gonna get out no matter what you do, human. All right, check out these guys. So these are all different species or kinds of darkling beetles. Come here. And if you, again, if you were here with me, I would ask you to smell these beetles because they stink. And you might also notice Look, you see those little dots? That is the liquid that they are secreting. And if I bother them, let's we'll see if they'll do it. These beetles are touched all the time. So, oh, this one's gonna start doing it. Let's see. They will put their abdomen, now I am just touching them gently because I don't want to hurt them. But if I touch them, touch them, touch them, they're not gonna do it. They will, when they will find these in the wild, they will actually put their abdomens, which is this part back here, up into the air, and they will squeeze out that liquid that makes them smell really bad. And if you get that on your hands, it'll actually turn your skin purple. And you can see right here, I've got that purple mark. So that was just from um, about 20 minutes ago when I got these beetles out, they sprayed on me. 
and it's already turning my skin purple right there. So that's pretty cool. Now it's not actually harmful to us. It can't hurt humans, but if you're an animal trying to eat it, it's gonna make it taste really bad and you're just gonna spit it out and you're not gonna finish eating it and you probably will learn from that and you will not eat it again. So these are all types of darkling beetles. Now I have another kind of darkling beetle I wanna show you. Um, this one is called a death feigning beetle. Look at that fun trick. <laughs> now these are not actually dead. And so feign means to play. So these animals play dead. Why would they want to play dead? See, look at him. He's just like, nope, I'm dead. Why would he want to play dead? What do you think? They play dead because most animals that eat insects, they eat insects that are alive, not dead. So by playing dead, it keeps predators from eating them. That's pretty cool if you ask me. Let's see, how long do you think that they can play dead for? Does anybody have a guess? If you have a guess on how long they can play dead for, you can put it into the comments and then I will tell you how long. And maybe we'll leave one on the screen so we can test it out. Now these beetles are super cool. These come from the deserts of the Southwest United States. Whoop, look at that. Oh, there he goes. Did you see him flip over? Wasn't that cool? So these are mainly found in the Sonoran Desert of the, of the, of the Southwestern portion of the United States, which is in Arizona. And look at his body. Do you see how his body is very bumpy? He also kind of has a waxy layer on his body. Now remember, I mentioned that darkling beetles, which this is a kind of darkling beetle, they do not need water, which comes in handy if you live in the desert. But because these beetles have a waxy layer on their body, they are able to collect some dew when the dew forms in the desert on their body. And then they too will arch their abdomen up and if you look at those bumps, you see how those bumps actually make a line? Those are like channels to help channel those little drops of dew down its back, around here, and into its mouth so it can get a drink of water. That is one fancy little trick that these beetles have. We're gonna leave this guy there and we're gonna see how long it takes to, uh, okay, we've got some guesses. We've got 30 minutes and 20 minutes, 10 minutes. So we're gonna see, a long time, <laughs> a long time. So we're gonna leave this guy here and we're gonna see how long he can play dead. Okay, so I have another beetle that is found in the Southwest desert of the United States. This beetle is really fun, and he's gonna walk around all over the place. These are called cactus longhorn beetles. Whoop, all over my friend that's playing dead. <laughs> these are cactus longhorn beetles. And these guys cannot fly, which is good, and neither can these guys. Most darkling beetles cannot fly. So look how big his feet are. You see those big old feet on him? I call those uh, cowboy boot feet. Doesn't it look like he's wearing cowboy boots. I think it does. He has very long antennae, which is why they are called a cactus longhorn beetle because they have really long antennae. Now, since they're called a cactus longhorn beetle, where do you think they live? In cactus. What do you think they eat? Cactus, yes. So these guys are usually found on a type of cactus called choya. And that 
cactus has lots of spines. It's very, very prickly. Um, they also like prickly pear cactus. And they eat that. And they also will um, lay their eggs inside of the cactus right at the bottom. And then the little larvae, they hatch out and they dig down into the ground and they feed on cactus also. So this one, there's one, I've got another one here. Okay, so we have two cactus longhorn beetles. Do you see how one is bigger than the other? Now one is the female and one is the male. Oh wait, I wanna show you something real quick that this guy is doing. Look at that mouth. Can you see his mouth right there? Now remember, he eats cactus. So they have those big, huge pinchers to help them chew up that cactus that they're eating. And these guys can bite and it does hurt. But we do hold these so they're used to being held by humans. So um, hopefully he's not going to bite me. So I don't know if you've noticed, but our friend the death feigning beetle is still playing dead. Okay, so one is the male or the girl or the boy and one is the female, the girl. Let me see some hearts if you think this big one is the girl. What do you think? Okay, I see some hearts. Okay, now let me see some hearts if you think this little one is the girl. My friends who said that this big one is the girl, you are right. And I think that maybe you've listened to my lives before. Because in the world of bugs, generally, the females are bigger than the males. So this is one of those cases where the female is bigger than the males. And the reason the females are bigger is because it takes a lot of energy to make all of the eggs. So they end up being bigger than the males. Okay, so I'm gonna put these uh, cactus longhorn beetles away and we are going to look at a different type of beetle. This next beetle is not a darkling beetle, but please notice that our death feigning beetle is still playing dead. All right, check out this guy right here. Now, these are called Bess beetles. You can also call them a patent leather beetle. Now, these beetles right here, they are very shiny, which is why they're called a patent leather beetle. And they live in groups. So there's a whole bunch of them that will live together and they work together. They work together to grow their own food. So they're like farmers. So they eat dead, rotting wood. They are a decomposer, but they don't really get much nutrition from that wood, although they do get some. So their poop, which is called frass, their frass actually grows a fungus that they then harvest and that's what they eat and feed their larvae. So these guys are farmers. They grow their own food. Now we want to look at this guy up close, don't we? I know I do. So look at his antennae. Aren't those cool? He's got these little like, they kind of look what do these look like? Looks like he's got little uh, combs on the end of it and they're very, very hairy. Those hairs are called setae. The setae is used for feeling vibrations but also picking up smells or odors called pheromones. 
And these guys communicate or talk to each other with those pheromones, but they also make a sound. And I'm gonna try to get him to make a sound here. See if we can hear it. Can you guys hear that? Let me see a, a like or a heart if you can hear that sound. I have a question here. So G wants to know if the female cacti, cacti beetle eats the male after she lays eggs. No. So those cactus longhorn beetles are herbivores. They don't eat other animals. So they do not, she does not eat the male after she lays her eggs. That's a really good question. I'm so glad you guys could hear that sound. So these beetles, they have two sets of wings like all beetles do. This outside set of wings that we can see are called elytra. They're very hard. <laughs> he does not like that. These are very, very hard. It's like a suit of armor. And then underneath of those wings are another pair of wings called, eli or called membranous wings. Those membranous wings are very thin. And if a beetle can fly, that's the wings they use to fly. You may have seen a ladybug take flight and they open up those wings that are red with black spots. Those are the elytra. And underneath unfold some black wings that they fly with. Now these beetles, they cannot open these wings. They are fused or glued together by nature. But they still have those wings underneath of there. And so how they make that sound is by rubbing the wings on the elytra the hard wings on the outside and they make that squeaky sound and that's how they talk to each other they let each other know if uh, there's danger or what just what's going on now look at these big mandibles can you see those the big mouth there oh my goodness so they those are big and very strong and that's so that they can chew up that dead rotting wood okay i'm gonna put him back we're gonna get our other friend who did not want to go for a stroll at all look at that guy these are very cute aren't they and i want you to notice that our death fainting beetle is still playing dead Urgh. all right so now i have another kind of beetle i want to share with you Here he is right here. Okay, here you go. Now this is a larva of a beetle. It looks way different than the larvae of our mealworms, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. So the darkling beetle larvae look much different than this type of a larva. You can also call this guy a grub. And grubs are super important for our environment. Some of them can be a pest. Uh, this one is not a pest. So if you look at his head, oh, he's doing a back bend. He's doing his yoga this morning. Let's see. We try to keep our beetles healthy by having them do exercises. Look at that head. Look at these mandibles. Those are super big, and he will pinch my little fingernail with that. So they use those to chew up dead, rotting wood, just like our best beetles do. Check out that guy. So these guys live in dead rotting wood and they eat the dead rotting wood. So what is this gonna turn into? Now this, I don't have a living adult beetle, but I do have one that um, has been in our freezer and we always um, save our animals when they die and we put them in the freezer and then we pin them and preserve them. And so this one hasn't been pinned yet, but this is a flower beetle, and this is the larva of this flower beetle. So these flower beetles are found in the rainforest of Africa, and there they eat nectar and pollen and fruit. So since these guys eat nectar and pollen, that means they are also 
pollinators. And my friends, beetles are very important pollinators. In fact, there are the beetles are just as important of pollinators as things like bees and butterflies and bats. Beetles are very important pollinators. There are some um, animals or some plants that are only pollinated by beetles, which is really cool if you ask me. So you notice how these are very shiny and green. I'm gonna put the larva away. You notice, or maybe I'll put him down here. You notice how um, this beetle is very shiny and green? Do you remember where I said it comes from? It comes from, oh, look at this guy. You see how he's scooting along on his back? <laughs> That's so funny, isn't that? He's so fat that he can't even use his legs to walk around. What's moving inside of the grub? I love that question, but I'm gonna make you wait just a moment for the answer. <laughs> so uh, this guy, this beetle right here is shiny and green. That makes him look like a wet leaf. So if you look like a wet leaf, then predators are not going to want to eat you for dinner. So that is a sort of a camouflage and camouflage is when you blend in with your environment so that predators or even your prey cannot see you. And if you look at his head, he does have a horn. This is a male. So these horns, they or these males, they use those horns to fight with other males to get a girlfriend. And look, even the underside of his body is pretty. Isn't he so pretty? Very pretty. Oh, look what's happening right now. Oh, I'm so glad that happened. That's what I was waiting for. So if you look at this animal's body, you notice that this end part is much darker than the rest of his body. And you can see stuff moving inside. What you are seeing is his digestive system. So this guy eats the dead rotting wood and then he works that dead rotting wood through his body and he gets some nutrition from it. But there is nutrition left over. There are vitamins and minerals that this animal cannot use for his own body. It's leftovers. It's like when you have pizza and you have some couple slices left, you put those in the refrigerator, right? Well, he doesn't put his in the refrigerator. He poops it out and puts it in the earth. This right here is vitamins for our earth. Did you know that the earth needs vitamins? It does. Just like you and I need vitamins, our earth needs vitamins too. And it's animals like this, which are decomposers that make and then give those vitamins to the earth. So not only does he clean up the dead rotting trees that are on our planet, but he also turns those dead rotting trees to vitamins. Now, yes, this is bug poop, but the actual name for it is frass. And bug frass is vitamins for the earth. Now, this is not vitamins for humans, so do not eat bug poop because that is gross, my friends. So Megan and kids, I hope you uh, that answered your question on what you can see inside of his body. You're just looking at him, his little poop factory. He's making, making poop and vitamins for the earth. All right, I'm gonna put these guys away. Check it out, our deaf fainting beetle is still playing dead. Now, I wanna show you something that I did not get out yet. sorts of kinds of grubs and I'm looking for a particular kind. It doesn't look like I have any right now. Oh, maybe not. All right. So I'm going to show you something that's in this box. So this is just a whole bunch of soil. This is really, really good soil. And if I dig around in here, we're gonna find, do you guys like to dig? 
I really like to dig. You find all sorts of cool animals when you're digging. And of course, most of those animals are bugs. Okay, he's not so easy to find. Let me get a bowl. I'm gonna dump this out Up here. I am looking, look at that, I found him. Check out that little tiny grub. He's just a baby. I mean, when he was born, he was smaller than that. When he came out of his egg, he was much smaller than he is right now. Let's see if he's gonna show his little head. There's his little head. This is a larva or a grub of a beetle that we have in the United States that is really big. And I don't have any that are alive right now. So I'm going to show you some fresh out of the freezer. So this little grub right here, that larva, is gonna turn into this Dynasties beetle. So this species is a Dynasties tidius. You see those horns? So there's two species. There's the Eastern and the Western that we can find here in the United States. And actually, you know what? This is the Western species. So this is a male. You see those big horns? And we can collect these um, in Arizona. So I've mentioned before that I go to Arizona every summer to collect bugs for the insect zoo and also to learn. It's a conference I go to where we get to learn a whole bunch of things about insects and other arthropods. So these beetles, this one is the female and this one is the male. And in this case, the males can be bigger than the females and the males have these really cool horns. And what do you think those males use those for? Ooh, I have a question. What do you feed the grub? So, um, well, first of all, the soil that these grubs are in is a sort of a compost that we make here at the insect zoo. Um, we start it though with some uh, black gold soil that is made by my friend Steven down in um, Louisiana. And then we get um, soil, organic soil from the store and mix it with that, but then also we've got dead rotting leaves in it, so hardwood leaves and rotting woods of all different kinds of wood. And we let that sit in a container and we, um, we you know, turn it as needed and it's breaking everything down and it's making really great soil. Excuse me, look at this guy, he's digging down. So they eat on the dead rotting wood, but they're also eating that soil and um, look at him, he's, he's pretty fast, isn't he? He's still there, but he's, he's going down. And we also feed them bits of dog food so that they're getting a little bit of protein. What is my favorite true bug? So uh, that's a tough question. Probably the peanut headed bug, which is a phlegorid. Um, you can Google that. That might be my favorite true bug. And we're going to talk about what it means to be a true bug when we get to those. So these are a cool beetle that is found here in the United States, the female and the male. And I can tell that like this is upside down to you guys, isn't it? Sort of. I guess it's fine. All right, I'm going to put these guys away. I'm also going to put my little larva. Look. He's gone. He has buried himself. So do you want to see another larva, another grub? Oh, look, our beetle is coming back alive. <laughs> How long was that? Did anybody time that? What are their names from Addie? You love bugs, Addie. Oh, I love bugs too. I'm so glad to hear that you are a bug lover. 
So um, the larvae, they don't have names, but most of the beetles do have names. And if they have a name, I will tell you what their names are. Now these beetles here, we have lots of them and it's hard to tell them apart. So we don't have names for them. Did anybody time that? How long was it? I don't know how long we've been on the live, but uh, that was a long time. Now I'm gonna tell you a story. So when I was in college at the University of Nebraska Lincoln, we had these and my job, one of my jobs, was to take care of the bugs in the entomology department, just like I do here. So why was the male beetle turning black? You mean this one here? Is that what you mean? So it's just a mottled color. And when they get wet, they also turn um, darker, uh, the males and the females. So since this has been in the freezer, it is, it is wet. And so it looks darker. And when it dries out, it'll be um, this lighter color, but it'll still have black dots on it. I hope that answers your question. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you the story about this. So um, I went to the University of Nebraska Lincoln and I took care of the bugs. And we had death feigning beetles. And for five days in a row, I went in to take care of the bugs. And these two death feigning beetles we had were in the same spot, playing dead like this. And I was like, oh man. So on the fifth day, I was like, okay, these are dead. So I threw them in the garbage can. Then on Monday, when I came back into the department, the custodian handed me a cup with these two beetles in it and said, I found these crawling around in the garbage can. <laughs> so for five days, these beetles were playing dead in the same spot. I swear they were in the same spot. And then when I, after I threw them away, they decided to come back alive and stop playing dead. Crazy little critters. Okay, so now I have, where did you come from? Right there. So now I have another grub that I wanna show you. It's also in here. Let me get him out of here. Okay, so first of all, I want you to notice this right here. Do you see that? Does anybody know what that is? We talked about it a little bit with the last grub or larva. This is poop. Look at that big bug poop. And doesn't it look just like dirt? It sure does. Looks just like the delicious soil that is in this enclosure. So I'm gonna dig down in here. Well, can you see that moving? Let's see. Wowzer. Let me blow them off. Look at how big this guy is. So here he is against my hand. So this is a larva or a grub of a type of beetle that we do not have here in the United States. It's called an elephant beetle, Megasoma mars is its scientific name. So this guy is found in Africa and it eats dead, rotting wood. Now it is alive, you saw it moving under the soil, but right now it's kind of like, oh no, is this thing going to eat me? So since this one is so big, we can see more things on it than we can on the others. Like all these little spikes. Doesn't it look like he needs to shave? You see those? Those are the setae, those are the hairs, and those hairs are all over his body. And so those are those super hairs that he uses to feel and smell and hear. Now you can also notice that he's got, you see those black dots all around there? So if you watched my live about the hissing cockroach. Sorry, my daughter just called me. So you know what these might be for. These holes are these dots actually have holes in them, teeny tiny holes, and you can kind of see the opening. You see that little dip there? Here, you can see it on this one really well. So inside of these dots are little tiny holes called spiracles. And those spiracles are how insects breathe. 
So those are his breathing holes. Now we can also look at his face. It's kind of dirty. Let's check out that face. Look at that face and look at his mouth. No, nope, don't bite me. Let me. Get my thumb underneath here. Look at that mouth. You see that? So that mouth is very, very strong. It's kind of dirty. That mouth is very strong because what does he use it to eat? He eats dead, rotting wood. So he has to have that strong mouth to dig into that dead, rotting wood. And look what he's about to make. You see what he's doing right here? Can you see this? So this is, so these animals don't have butts. They have what's called an anus, which is uh, where their poop comes out. Here it comes. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> That's a lot. And it's kind of liquidy. So if you look at his other frass, his other poop, it was really dry. So right now he is kind of scared. He's like, oh no, something's trying to eat me. So one of the defenses of a lot of bugs is to poop on whatever is bothering them. Now, I do not suggest doing that. As a human, if you something's bothering you, don't just poop on him, okay? Because <laughs> that is not socially acceptable for humans, but for these types of animals, it is. So this poop right here, I'm gonna put right into his uh, enclosure, and then I'm gonna wipe my hands a little bit. But it's just like soil, my friends. But if I were to smell, if you were here with me right now, I would have you smell that poop because it smells different than it does whenever it comes out when he's not afraid. So it also will make him smell bad. Okay, so that poop or that frass was made right in here, which is what I call the good poop factory because these animals make good poop. It's good for the earth. The plants and trees, they need that poop. So these guys are beneficial insects or they are helping our planet and us. So these good poop factories, very important for our earth. Now another thing that you can see in this larva is this line right here. So these guys, they have an open circulatory system. Now what that means is their blood flows openly throughout their body. They don't have blood vessels like we do. Like if you look at your wrist, like you see my wrist and I've got these, these are veins. So that's how we carry our blood. But these guys, their blood goes throughout their whole entire body. But they do have one big blood vessel that goes right here. And so that's what you're seeing right here. Now, because I can see this so well, it tells me that this larva is about to pupate or turn into a pupa so that he can change into a beetle. Now, should we look at what this is gonna turn into? Because I have one. Now, it turns into the elephant beetle or Megasoma mars. And I don't have one that's alive right now. You might be asking, why? Why do you have the grubs and not the beetles? Well, the grubs live for a long time. As a grub, this, this elephant beetle right here, this is a grub for like two years. Let me get this. This, this grub is a grub for about two years. That's a really long time. And then it's only an adult for about three months. So here I have one that um, is frozen right now. So this grub or this beetle is an elephant beetle, Megasoma mars. Look how big he is on my hand. Isn't he amazing? I mean, he is like with his, look at this, let me see. If I put his horn on the tip of my finger, look how big he is. He is so big. Now, he kind of looks scary, doesn't he? Look at all these horns on his head. He's got um, two horns sticking up here. 
And then he's got one really long horn right here with two spikes. And then look, there's even a little spike right here. So he looks scary, but he can't really hurt you. Not humans. He uses those horns to fight with other males so that he can get a girlfriend, which is pretty cool. Now he's starting to thaw out, so I gotta get him back in the freezer because we're not ready to pin him yet. But I wanna show you his antennae. Do you see where my fingers are down here? See those? So he's got these little, these cool antennae. And if I turn him over, you can see that he's got sete or those hairs all over his body. He's even got a hairy butt. That's fuzzy. It feels like velvet there. So these guys eat nectar and fruit. Look, he's all super hairy up here. He's got all sorts of sete up there. Let's see if I can focus in on that a little bit. So these are also pollinators. They pick up all of that um, pollen on these hairs. And look, you can see his eyes. Whoa, look how big those eyes are. You see them, one there, one there. They're super big. And look at his mouth. His mouth is like a little paintbrush. So it's got, it's all full of sete or hairs and he slurps up the nectar or the fruit, or the juice from the fruit. So he can't actually bite you at all. All right, I gotta get this guy back in the freezer. So I'm gonna pull out this one because we're gonna talk about that one next. They are getting soft. So if they get too soft, then I'm gonna have to pin them right now and I don't wanna do that. Okay, he's back in the freezer. All right, I have another larvae I wanna show you real quick. It looks very similar to the one we just looked at, but it's gonna turn into something different. Check out this guy. So it looks just like the other one, but it is different. See, don't they look very similar? So it's kind of hard to tell the differences between grubs or larvae, and most of the time, it's the hairs or the setae that are around here or the markings that are up here, um, or even just the shape of the, um, the anus where the poop comes out that tells you what kind of larva you have. But this larva is going to turn into this Dynasties Hercules beetle. Now he's frozen, so um, he's kind of stiff, which is why he's in that funny Marv, and this is some, uh, Marv, what is a Marv? I don't know. He's in that funny pose. Um, and I wanna keep him frozen. So the Dynasties Hercules beetle is found in Central and South America, and they also feed on fruit and nectar. So my friends, these are also pollinators, which is very important. And look, you can see his fuzzy butt even more. You see his fuzzy butt? That's all set, eh? Let's see if I can, can I... I can't really see it on the, the red. Can you guys see that fuzzy butt? Yeah, you can, I'm sure you can. So again, he is a pollinator and he even has the set, eh, all over his horn here. And that also helps him to find the females because those females are using pheromones or chemicals or smells to tell him where they are at. And they use these to wrestle with other males. Oh, I'm sorry that you feel that it's terrifying. These animals are not harmful to us and they also are very, very cool. So he also has a fuzzy little mouth. He's got a paintbrush mouth. You can see that fuzzy little mouth. And all that fuzz all around here helps him to pick up the pollen so that he can pollinate those flowers. All right, I gotta get him back in the freezer. And then I have, oh, no, I forgot. I have a female that's alive that emerged not too long ago. So let's get her out and I'm gonna show you the female and the male.
So this is a female Dynasties Hercules, and this is a male. You see? So this species, the females are smaller, although this female is very small. So they can get much bigger. They can get to be about this big, the females. But you notice that she does not have um, a horn. And she spends most of her time underground. Okay, so let's see. Kendra, who's five, says, do bugs have teeth? And do they lose them like people? No, Kendra, bugs do not have teeth. They just have, they have little different parts of their mouth. Um, and that helps them to chew things up. But they do not have teeth and they do not lose them like we do. That was a great question, Kendra. So you notice this female has fuzz all over her body. Her whole body feels um, like velvet. So she again is a pollinator because she will just crawl right into those flowers and drink up some nectar and eat some of the pollen. And when she comes out, she goes to a new flower, crawls inside of it and pollinates that flower. So she's pretty cute, isn't she? And her name is Rosie. Nope, nope, it's not Rosie. Her name is Rosa. Sorry, I misread that. So this is Rosa for my friend who wanted to know if they have names. And this guy, when he was alive, um, he had a name, it was Stanley. So I like to call these um, Hercules beetles Stanley. So his name is still Stanley, but now he's um, he has passed away and we're going to preserve him. And I actually have one that has been preserved that I want to show you. I'm going to take that glass off of there. Let me just put this beetle back into the freezer. There you go, buddy. Okay, so what you are looking at right now is an Atlas beetle. Let me turn him around. Okay, so this is an atlas beetle and this is how we preserve them. So we call it pinning um, because most insects we put a pin through it to hold it down. But this insect I didn't um, because first of all, it was, it's super big and you have to use a very, very thick pin um, to put that in there. Um, but also because I don't like to, I just don't like to put pins in these big beetles, but lots of people do and that's fine. Instead, I use pins to just hold it. You see, these are all um, pins around here. I use it to hold it in place and I, I position it because once it is dried, you can't move it anymore. So I took this out of the freezer and I relaxed it or I defrosted it and then um, I put it into position and then it's gonna stay like that forever. So this is what we do with the animals so that they can still continue to teach people all over the world. Okay, so this is what we do with them when we preserve them. Okay, I have uh, one more beetle that I want to show you today. And this is the first beetle that we um, showed. When, so when we were waiting to start our live, this is the beetle that we were focused on. So this is a giant stag beetle. And these are found in Asia. And now we do have stag beetles here in the United States, um, but they don't get nearly as big as this guy. So this one is a male. The females are much smaller than the males, and the females do not have these big pinchers here. Now something cool, watch, watch this guy. Let's see if he'll do it. He will pinch with those, and he'll hang on. He's not gonna wanna pinch it. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> Look at that, whoa, there he goes. Look at him hang on to it. So next week we're gonna do some insect art and um, that includes asking this guy to color us a picture. So we're gonna 
give him a marker and let him uh, draw us a picture. But those are very, very powerful mandibles or pinchers, and they just use those um, to wrestle with other males so that they can get a girlfriend. Now this guy's cool because look, his eyes are on the sides of his head. Do you see those? Whoop, <laughs> he almost got me. And so are his antennae. So if you're like right here, he can't see you very well. If your finger's like right here. Now it does hurt to be pinched by these guys. I have been pinched before, it hurts really bad, and they don't let go. <laughs> so we're not gonna do that. But I wanna show you the underside, because you know what this guy eats as an adult? He eats fruit and nectar, just like our other beetles ate fruit and nectar. And so you can see he's got that hair or that setae down here to help him pick up that pollen to pollinate flowers. Don't bite me. Don't pinch me. <laughs> so he can't actually bite, so his mouth is like a paintbrush, and you can see his fuzzy little mouth. Let's see. Do you see his fuzzy, that orange fuzz? Um, that's where his mouth is, and he slurps up the nectar or the juice from the fruit, and then um, that helps to filter out anything that might be solid or get stuck in there. No, he's pinching me. <laughs> That was just a little love pinch to let me know that he's missed me. Well, look at that underside. Isn't he so cool? He is gorgeous. So the grub or the larva also feeds on dead rotting wood, which is very important. So these guys are decomposers as a larvae and pollinators as an adult. Okay, we're going to put him away. Okay. Oh, you know what? I have this pupa here that I want to show you. So this is a type of a flower beetle that makes this cocoon. Now it's actually inside of there. And you see all these? This is its frass. It's poop. So it has made this with the soil and also the poop. And so it's like a it's like a big ball of dirt, but it's not just dirt. It's soil and poop. And inside of there, this larva is changing into an adult beetle. And it'll just poke its way out of there whenever it's ready to come out. Pretty cool, huh? That is cool. Okay, what's next? How about our true bug? Let's check out our true bug. Now, it's called a true bug because it is a true bug. To be a true bug, you must have piercing, sucking mouth parts and wings that are called hemi-elytra wings. And that just means that they're part elytra, which are those hard, wings that are on a beetle, and then they're part membranous, which are the wings that are underneath. So this is the only true bug that we have right now at the insect zoo. This is called a wide-eyed assassin bug. These are found in Africa, and I cannot touch this bug because its saliva actually causes necrosis or rotting of the skin. That's right, if this was to bite me, it would start to eat my skin away, which is not cool at all. And these guys fly, so I'm being very careful. I've got the lid right next to me so that if something were to happen, I could quick put that on so that he doesn't fly away. And he's got these white spots right here why do you think he'd want to have those white spots? Well, it makes him look bigger and scarier than he really is, although he is kind of scary. So he uses those to help protect him from predators. Now I am going to pick him up here because I want to show you the underside. Okay. Let me get 
this back up here. Can we zoom in? Or not zoom, focus. Focus. Okay, how about here? There we go. Now I'm being very gentle with this animal with those forceps because I don't want to hurt him. So I'm while I'm holding him with those forceps, I'm also still being very gentle. Now do you see this beak right there? Whoops, he almost got me. Let me use the pen. Put your foot down. Please put your foot down. Thank you. Do you see this beak right here? This is a piercing sucking mouth part. See that? So this is what makes a bug a true bug, is a piercing sucking mouth part, but then also these hemielytra wings. So you can see that they're hard up here and then their membranous down here are soft or thin. So we have true bugs here that are called assassin bugs. And you could call this a, an assassin bug. And they're called that because they eat other insects. So when this goes to eat an insect, it hides out and it sneaks up just like an assassin would sneak up. And then it jabs it with this mouth part, this piercing sucking mouth part. And it puts, starts putting saliva into that insect which starts to break it down. And then it sucks out everything from inside and leaves the exoskeleton behind. So. We do have assassin bugs here, but they cannot cause your skin to start to rot. <laughs> so um, if you are in Africa, you would have these, um, these types of assassin bugs. And so you would need to worry about these. There's other types of assassin bugs like the kissing bug, which transmits Chagas disease. Um, so that, that is bad. Those are also found in Africa. And I've heard reports that there are some found um, in some parts of the United States. Um, they're being found more and more. Isn't he cool? But we don't really have to worry about the kissing bug yet. It's not a huge problem. And if you find a true bug in your yard and you want to know um, what it is, you can just send uh, me a picture of it and I'd be happy to let you know what kind of true bug it is even if it's not a true bug if any type of insect you want to send me a picture of it i will help you tell you what kind of insect it is all right friends guess what that is everything that i had to show you today Woo! sat on my bowl <laughs> so i want to thank you so much for tuning in today for beetles and our one true bug um, I'm not 100% sure what we're going to do on Monday, but I will set up an event and we will, um, and I'll, I'll let you know what we're going to do when I make that event. So my friends, thank you so much for joining us. If you are interested in having the insect zoo visit you, all you have to do is go to our website, zoo.ent.iastate.edu. And there you will find the information on our programming and also the fees to get us there to you. Um, we, are, we have suspended programming through May 9th as of right now. So um, we cannot host any groups here and we can't go anywhere. But when we come back, we are going to be back. You better believe it. So we miss seeing all of our bug friends in person, but I'm glad that we're able to uh, still teach you guys and show you some of our awesome animals. Insect Zoo t-shirts, we're running a special, so $10 for a shirt, and I'm splitting the shipping with you, so $2 for shipping. If you're interested in one, just shoot me a message um, or send me an email, zoo at iastate.edu, and I will let you know the sizes that are available in what um, design. So we have youth and adult sizes also. Oh, and if you like this, uh, this tarantula shirt, we also have hoodies of these tarantulas. So if you want, want, want a hoodie, send me a message. Um, those uh, are more, those are $30 for the hoodie. So, but again, I'll split the shipping with you. Okay, friends. Thank you so much for watching. Go forth and love the bugs. <laughs>